All right guys, first FPV build of 2023. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build and set up this seven inch long range FPV drone that's capable of almost 25 minute long flights, has automatic return to home functions and can film stabilized 4K footage without the added weight of a GoPro. All right, let's quickly go over all the parts that I'm gonna be using in this build. First up, the frame. For this build, I went with the HGLRC Recon 7 Pro frame. I really wanted a seven inch frame that had arm brace reinforcement. It also needed to fit the O3 air unit. This frame seemed perfect. I'm a fan of HGLRC products, so I figured I'd give this one a shot. Plus, it comes with tons of TPU parts for antennas, GPS, a GoPro mount, all that good stuff. Next up, I already mentioned this. O3 air unit. This is what I'm going to be using for the FPV footage and the HD footage. So I don't plan on mounting a GoPro to this build. That's going to save us a nice chunk of weight, giving us longer flight times. Since we're talking about the O3 air unit, I'll show you guys the antennas I'm planning on using with this. I don't plan on using the stock antenna. Um, these are HGLRC's hammer long range antennas. The frame comes with TPU pieces that are actually meant for these antennas. So it's going to fit that nicely. Next up, the flight controller and the ESC. I plan on using T-Motor for both of them. This is the Velox F7 Cine HD flight controller. This flight controller won't require any soldering as far as the O3 air unit goes because it actually has a plug specifically meant for the O3 air unit. This has dual BECs, a built-in barometer, which is something I definitely wanted on a long range build like this. And even though we're only using four motors on this build, this flight controller actually has eight motor outputs. So if you wanted to use a flight controller for an octocopter or an eight motor drone, uh, you can use this flight controller. On the ESC side of things, we're also going with T-Motor and I'll be using their Velox 50 amp 32-bit 4-in-1 ESC. This is going to pair nicely with the flight controller. Both of these are rated for 6S and I do plan on using 6S batteries for this build. Speaking of 6S, I'm going to be trying out a couple different lithium ion packs on this build, but the one I'm most excited for is this Upgrade Energy Dark Lithium 5200 milliamp 6S pack. I also have a 3000 milliamp lithium ion that I'll be trying out, uh, but I think that this one is going to be perfect for this build. Next up, motors. For motors, I'm going with T-Motors Velox 1500 KV motors. They sell these in 1300, 1500, and 1900 KV. For a build like this, for a long range build, I'd probably stick with 1300 or 1500. When I was gathering parts for this build, the 1300 KV was out of stock, so we went with 1500. For props, I have two sets that I want to try out. I've got a set of tri-blades and I've got a set of bi-blades. Both of these are HQ prop. The tri-blades are 7x4 and then the bi-blades are 7x4.5. At the end of the video, I'll let you guys know which one I prefer better. I'm anticipating that I'll like the bi-blades a little bit more since they're typically more efficient with long range drones, but we'll see. For a long range drone like this, I'm going with the best receiver I can get. This is the Crossfire Diversity Nano RX. With this, I also have two antennas, and these are the extended Crossfire Immortal T antenna V2s. What kind of long range build would I be doing if I didn't include a GPS? So in this build, I'm gonna be using this HGLRC M80 Pro. This GPS is actually gonna fit perfectly in the TPU pieces that are included with our frame. In addition to the GPS, I wanted to throw a beeper on this guy, so just to be safe, I picked up one of these. This is the Vifly Finder 2. This is a beeper that has its own battery source, so in the event of a crash where your battery comes disconnected and you can't beep it and there's no GPS, you can't find it anywhere, this thing's going to continue to beep because it has its own built-in battery. And last but not least, here are a couple additional things that I picked up to help make the build nice and clean. Got some battery straps here from RDQ. These come with every order you get from them. Got some Flywoo ND filters for the O3 air unit since that's gonna be our primary HD video source. Got some braided wire mesh for the motor wires. This is gonna help keep everything nice and organized on the arms. And you guys are probably looking at this like what the hell's going on? This is copper tape and this actually really helps get a solid satellite fix. I'll go further into detail on this once we're installing the GPS, but this is almost essential for any drone you have a GPS on. All right, let's put this drone together. First thing you gotta do, put your frame together. All right, so I'm not gonna show you guys how to um, assemble this frame. HGLRC or Recon actually has a nice PDF on how this frame goes together. So I'll flash that on the screen now. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. You guys can follow that, assemble this frame, and then we'll continue. 
So here is the frame all together. I haven't secured this top plate down yet. Just taking a look inside, I've got the front TPU pieces on there for the camera. This TPU piece and the rest of them we're probably gonna have to take off as we assemble the rest of the drone. But we've got the buzzer mount up here and that also has an antenna mount on the side. I'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, we have the O3 mount back here. The kit does come with other mounts for different VTXs, but I'm using the O3, so I've got the O3 mount back here. And then this is the TPU mount that's gonna hold all of our antennas. So like I said, I'm probably gonna have to remove these as we build the drone, but this is good for now. Next on the list, let's put our motors on. All right, so I got all my motors right here. Brushless motors, it doesn't matter which arm they go on, we can always change the direction of the motors in Betaflight. So when we're mounting the motor to this frame, since we're gonna be using this brace, we're actually gonna to have to get some additional screws since we don't have screws that are long enough that come with the motors or with the frame. So the, front, the screws that come with the motors are long enough to go through just these arms, but once you add this, it makes it a little bit thicker, and unfortunately these screws don't go through and don't reach the motor. So instead of using these screws, I have some M3 by 12 screws and I'll leave a link to a kit of these down in the description you can get these on Amazon but this is going to give us enough length to go through this as well as the actual arm so let's get the motors all mounted up I'll show you one and then the process is the same for all four so both of these arm braces are the exact same so it doesn't matter which one you use just make sure that these grooves line up with the holes obviously that's not right so if we rotate it this way that should line up that looks good. So let's take some of our screws for the motors. I'm gonna put it through here. And that's just enough to grab onto the motor. So let's get that one on first. That's good. Take another screw. So running the wires along the arms, let's do that for each arm. All right, so we got our motors on. I mainly used um, M3 by 12 screws. If you use M3 by 14, just make sure that the screw isn't going up into the motor, otherwise you're gonna have problems. Um, I will leave a link to some M3 by 12 screws for this build down in the description. So let's put these on the wires just to kind of clean this up a little bit. You should have plenty here to cover these. I'm gonna have it go all the way down to the motor. So I'm gonna cut mine about right there. And I'm just gonna make a couple. That are about that long. Cool, so now we've got our rear braided mesh uh, wire covers and then we've got our front. So these uh, braided mesh things can come apart very easily. So to prevent that from happening before anything happens to this end, so right after you cut it, take a lighter and just kind of melt the end together. You really don't have to hold it there long. And that should be good. So now this isn't gonna all fall apart. So do that to all of these just to make sure that they kind of stay together. Take your wires, I'm gonna do it just on this motor here and just put your wires through it. I like to have this all the way up against the motor, or at least as far in as I can. That's good, so that's gonna keep the wires nice and tidy. So now let's do that all the way around just to kind of clean this up a little bit. Okay, so we've got all these wires nice and organized. Next, what I wanna do is I'm gonna put the ESC on here and we're gonna to get to soldering the motors to the ESC as well as the power cable. So let's open this up. Stickers, that is a nice looking ESC. Look at that. So the ESC is typically gonna sit in the drone like this. You've got motors one, two, three, and four. It's labeled on the ESC. But instead on this frame, since the power cable is actually gonna be coming out the front, they don't really have a way of getting the power cable out the rear. Since they have this cutout right here, that's what we're gonna use. The power cable is gonna be coming out through there. What I'm gonna do is instead of having the ESC oriented like this, I'm actually gonna rotate it like this. Now, Betaflight has made it pretty easy to rotate things and make sure that it's remapped so that motor four is motor one and motor three is motor two and so on and so forth. I'll show you guys how to do that in a little bit. But now we can just basically mount our ESC right like this and we'll have our power cable right here 
that can just come right up. And we'll also have room to put our capacitor on there since we have this nice big groove right here. So this is how I'm gonna mount the ESC. With the frame, we got some, we got four of these longer gold M3 screws. We're gonna be using those. Before we do that, we're gonna put the rubber grommets on the ESC. So T-Motor included these little yellow grommets right here, but instead of using those, we're actually gonna use the ones that are included with the frame just because it spaces it a little bit further away from the frame. Put the uh, thicker side on the bottom because we're gonna be trying to just space it away from the frame. So right like that. If you struggle with these, you can always take some dental floss and you can put it through the top of the hole on the ESC. So you'll take it, kind of put it through here, feed it through, make a circle, put this end through the circle and then just pull the dental floss and it'll pull this through with it. I've done that on a couple builds and it definitely helps, but these ones are actually going in pretty easily. So we don't have to do that. There we go. So with those rubber grommets on, we can now secure this to the frame. We'll take these four gold screws that came with the frame and we're gonna feed these through the bottom. We've got four holes that are cut out for the 30 by 30 mounting. And now making sure that they don't fall out the bottom, flip the drone over like that. They'll kind of fall a little bit, but it's still enough to get the ESC on there. Now take your ESC. Remember, we're not mounting it like this. We're gonna be mounting it like that. Put it over the screws. Nice. And now we can kind of just feed those through from underneath. And there we go. Perfect. Now we've got our ESC mounted up. All right, so now it's time to solder our motors to the ESC. Now looking at the ESC, we have four motors here. Each motor gets three pads. So these three pads right here will go to motor three, which is right here. These three pads right here are gonna go to motor four, and those are right here. So when you're soldering these wires to the pads, it doesn't matter which order they go in. You can have it be completely flat like that. You can have, you can twist the wires and then, you know, not really care which pad the wires go to because all that's gonna do is change the direction of the motor and that's gonna be something that we have to change in beta flight anyways. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this with motor three. This is motor three right here, but the process is gonna be the same for motor one, two, three, and four. So I'm gonna measure out the motor wire right here. I'm going to kind of go wire by wire and just say, okay, this one is gonna to go to this pad right here. This middle one is gonna to go to the second pad. And then this one is gonna to go to this furthermost pad right here and kind of just measure them accordingly. So I'll take this, this one is gonna go right there. So I'm gonna say right where, I'm gonna cut this one right here. Perfect. Do the same thing for this one. This one is gonna go right about there. Make sure you give yourself a little bit of slack because if you don't have any slack, then it's gonna just be a pain to solder these on. And then this one is gonna go right here. So I'm gonna give myself some slack, cut that. And just kind of splice these wires. Perfect. Before we do any soldering, always a good idea to put some flux on these pads. It just makes it a lot easier. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit of solder on each of these wires. Don't need much. Cool. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm actually gonna go around the whole board. I'll just show you guys this, these three motors, but just kind of put some solder on these motor pads. So I would suggest soldering up the wire closest to you first, it's just a little bit easier. So I'll have this come back here, kind of like that. All right, there's one, two. I'm just kind of stacking these wires on here. You can have them go however you want. Perfect. I like that, I'm happy with that. Whatever, dude, looks good to me. Let's do that with each motor. That is pretty clean. 
I am very happy with how that came out. So the capacitor that's included is this one right here, and it actually fits right in between this carbon fiber plate right here. So I'm gonna be able to just put the, the uh, capacitor right in there and just kind of bend these over and solder them on directly to the battery pads. I'm gonna put some flux on the ends of this capacitor. That's what we're gonna be soldering to this, and I'm gonna put some flux right on here. Whenever you're working with battery pads, it's best to use a pretty thick tip. That's the size of the tip that I'm using. And it works really good for big pads like this. That looks good. I'm gonna put some solder on these, the positive and negative poles of this capacitor. Putting solder on the actual pole on the capacitor makes this a lot easier, I've noticed, because these can be difficult to solder. Just a little bit. You probably won't even see it that much. So what I'm gonna do to make this nice and flush in this hole against the ESC, I'm going to just bend these poles over like that and now these can line up with the positive and negative. So I'm gonna do this initially right through here, just to have a good idea of how it's gonna be sitting. And to keep it as flush as I can, I'm actually gonna trim these capacitor ends right here, just to keep it nice and flush. So I'm gonna cut this down probably just to about there. Underneath the frame, I'm gonna put some blue tack in that hole and that's going to hold the capacitor so that I can solder it a little easier to the ESC pads. Now I can push that down, right like that. And now I can solder that down. Positive and negative. Cool, that's good for now. Now when I lift this up, should have the capacitor on there. So now we have the capacitor right there. Very cool, so now we can get our battery lead hooked up. They include a nice little XT60 with the ESC. I'm going to trim this because it's gonna be coming out right like that. Just gonna put this top cover on just to get some perspective of where the XT60 is gonna be coming out. So if I have this, I'll probably want it about here because it's going to be coming out basically at these standoffs. So I can kind of eyeball that and be like, I want the XT60 to come out about that much and I'll probably just cut it about there. All right, so trim these down, we'll tin them. Now, red to positive, black to negative. So now we're pretty much all set with the ESC. The last thing we really have to do is plug in the ribbon cable underneath. There's a plug on this side closest to the O3 air unit TPU piece. If you did put this on, you're gonna have to take it off now. In fact, I'm actually gonna just take off all of this TPU back here. I guess when you're assembling the frame, you don't have to put any of the TPU pieces on. It'd probably just be easiest to do that. All right, so now with all the TPU off, we can plug in this ribbon cable. This ribbon cable came with the ESC, I think. It either came with the ESC or the flight control. I'm pretty sure it came with the ESC. But this plugs in right underneath here, right like that. Make sure it's in all the way. With that all set, now I'm gonna move over to the flight controller. They include a lot of yellow grommets in the container for that, but just to keep it consistent with the look of the one that's on the ESC, I'm gonna use the remaining four grommets that HGLRC included with the frame kit. 
So I'm gonna use these. All right, so now it's time to hook up our flight controller. Now, I was initially thinking, since we have the ESC rotated 180 degrees, we would have to rotate the flight controller 100, 180 degrees. Now, when you're looking at the flight controller, this arrow should be pointing forward, so we're gonna want it facing in this direction. With these flight controllers, since we have a little plug down here, this is gonna plug into one of these two ports up here. So this flight controller has eight motor outputs. This one right here is for motors one through four, and then this one is for motors five through eight. So we're gonna wanna plug it into this plug right here. Troncat from the future here, instead of plugging the ESC into this port over here, plug it into this one. This one is for motors one through four, and this one is actually for motors five through eight. I got those two swapped. So again, plug it into this one, not this one. So this is the cable that we already attached. It's just gonna plug in right like that. Now initially I thought we were gonna just have to go like that, but luckily there's enough slack on here to actually have it sit normally on this drone. It initially pulls on the wire a little bit, but then once you press it down, you can tell that there is a little bit of slack in there, so it's not completely strained. Let's start to get some stuff mounted to the drone. Now that we have the flight controller on top, it's kind of time to hook up the buzzer. We'll do the VTX, the camera, the GPS, and the receiver. So let's start with the easiest thing, and I think that's gonna be the O3 air unit. So I'm gonna take the TPU piece right here, and we can just kind of deal with this right now, and then we'll hop over to the antennas and we can get the camera mounted and all that stuff. So let's get the O3 air unit out of the box. First thing I wanna do is take these stickers off. Now, since I have antennas that I'm gonna use for this, I'm not gonna be using this single antenna on the back. I'm gonna take this back cover off so that we can just replace the antennas right off the bat. That cover comes off. Take the antenna off and I'm gonna grab the other antennas that I got. One for each UFL connector. Cool, so before we get these attached to that, I'm gonna take this rear TPU piece right here. You want these things out, and we're gonna put these around the antennas first. So there's like a little slit in these that makes it a little bit easier to do. Feed that wire right through there, and then this. Fits right in like that. Cool. So those only go down halfway into this TPU. I think there's like a little groove that it gets caught on, but that looks good. So now we can take these and we're gonna feed them right through here, like that. And then do the same with this one. So now we gotta get these UFL connectors hooked up to the O3 air unit. They can go on either connector. It's not really, doesn't really matter which one they go on. There's one. There we go. Got both of those hooked up. Make sure those are secured down. Now we can take that little plate that fell off, this right here. We're gonna just put this back on to secure that in place. Right there. Take the other screw and get that in. All right, so now that we've got the antennas all secured to this, it's time to put the O3 air unit into this little cage. Now the way that this cage sits, it sits like that, so that's the rear of the drone right there. We can fit it around like that, and there is a little cutout for the USB port. So make sure that's secured down. I'm gonna take this and fix it back to the TPU. Since we're almost done with this rear piece, that will sit right like that. That's perfect. And now we can take our ribbon cable. You can either use the one that's included with the O3 air unit, or you can use the one that's included in the kit. I'm just gonna go with the one that came with the O3 air unit because it's a little bit thinner, and I'm gonna run it right underneath the O3 air unit. So it's gonna go right like that, plugs into that port, and then make sure it's nice and flat when you put this down. Looks like it's flat. 
we go. Now with that through there, this can plug right into this port right here and that is for the O3 air unit. And that plugs in right like that. Perfect, so now we have our O3 air unit installed. Let's get the camera secured to the front. Let's start by removing these screws that are in the side of the camera. We aren't going to use these screws when we're mounting it on this. The frame actually came with the screws that we need. So you can save these. Cool. So these screws aren't long enough to go through the carbon fiber and the TPU. So we'll take these M2 by, what are these? 18 or something? So we'll take these longer screws and these are gonna be the ones that actually hold the camera. So I'm gonna run this coaxial cable around that. You could have it go underneath the flight controller and that might actually make it a little cleaner. Should I do that? No, I'm not. I'm gonna run it right on top of the board. Right like that. And now you can line up the holes in the side of the camera with the holes in the TPU. Secure it down. Got that one. And now we'll just do this one. All right, and there's our camera. All right, so now we're gonna be doing some soldering to the flight controller. So I'm gonna use some of the included um, metal nuts to kind of just keep the flight controller from moving around a lot. I'm probably just gonna use two of them, but these are gonna go right on these gold screws. And you don't have to screw them on like crazy. All right, so I got those two nuts on there just to kind of hold it down while I'm soldering the rest of the components. All right, since we're kind of working with up here, let's get our beeper on next. So with the beeper, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just take the TPU piece out and we're gonna have to modify it a little bit to fit our beeper. I'm not removing those screws completely. I just wanna make it so that I can take the beeper mount off. Take these out for a second. Now here is the uh, beeper. So this is gonna connect to a couple pads on the flight control. They even give us a little zip tie. We're not gonna need that because we have this mount that's specifically for this. All right, so here's our beeper. Here's the little cage we're gonna be putting it in. As you can see, it fits pretty nicely, but it's not quite tall enough. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna modify this a little bit just so that it fits this beeper. So to do that, I'm gonna take some side cutters and I'm gonna cut some of these top pieces off so that they're just not there. And that's gonna allow this beeper to fit all the way through. I'm gonna try just having that one right there, but we may have to remove that one too. So now, so now I'll take the beeper, put it through here. Kind of pull this back a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So now that's holding it in place and this one fits nicely. I'm not sure what beeper this is made for. I've, um, I bet HDLRC has their own beeper that is meant for this, but this one clearly works pretty good too. And you have the battery in there, so nice. Now we can take the plug since it's up high enough. We'll plug this in right here. We have access to the little button that's right next to it. Cool, let's put this in the drum. Gonna take the two standoffs that I just removed and put those back in. Right like that. And now feed this underneath the camera coaxial cable right like that. Line those standoffs up. And screw it down. I'm gonna remove the camera real quick just to kind of keep it out of the way while we're working with 
the flight controller. I think it's just gonna be a little bit easier so we're not like fumbling around that coaxial cable going to the camera. We can just pick up the camera and move it where we gotta move it. So now we have clear access to the flight controller and we can solder up our wires, keep it nice and clean. We've got a B plus, B minus, and then a ground. So we're gonna be using these three pads for the buzzer that we just installed. So same thing as before, take some flux. I'm just gonna put flux all over this board because we're gonna be doing a lot of soldering. Tin these pads. All right, so let's hook up the red wire first. Red is going to BZ plus. So let's go in right there. Perfect. Next is yellow and yellow is going to BZ minus. That's right next to that one. And then ground goes right next to that. Cool. Now our buzzer is hooked up. Now let's get the GPS hooked up. So we're gonna move the camera back towards the front. I'll move it over to the side because the pads that we're gonna be working with are right here. This whole top row right here, the five volt, TX, RX, SDA, SCL. So we're gonna use that top row of pads for the GPS. All right, so now let's get our GPS hooked up. So with our GPS, we got this power plug. One end will plug into the GPS. The other end does have a plug on it, but we don't have that plug on this flight controller, so you can just cut it off. I already cut this one off, and we're gonna solder these wires right up to the flight controller. Before we do that, I wanna show you guys a quick trick with getting faster GPS lock using that copper tape that I mentioned earlier. All right, so taking the wire that was included for the GPS, what you wanna do is coil it up so it's nice and tight, like that. Leave yourself a little bit of room because you want to be able to move these wires around a little bit when you're uh, soldering, but you basically want it to be right like that. So now we're going to take the copper tape and we're just going to wrap it around the GPS wire. Start right at the top and just kind of rotate this wire, wrapping it in the copper tape. All right, so I got the GPS wire all wrapped up, not quite until the end, uh, but pretty close. This is going to be good enough. So, what we want to do now is take our flux pen and we're going to solder a black wire to this somewhere on here and it's gonna to attach to our ground. So I'm just gonna put a little solder on the copper right like that. That's perfect. Now I'm just gonna take a loose black wire. You could use any wire. You could pull one from one of these plugs that you know you're not gonna use. I'm gonna solder this end to the solder that I just put on there. Splice this a little bit. Put some solder on this end right here to just tin it. We've got our blob of solder right here. Perfect. Now with that on, I'm gonna cut the wire so that it's the exact same length as these ones. And that wire is going to connect to the same ground that's on our uh, flight controller as the GPS. So now another thing that I have, you could probably use any tape for this, but this is kind of like a fabric tape. I don't know, this stuff is like really sticky, but it's perfect for this because you just need, you know, that much and you're good. You could also use heat shrink, I don't know. So now with this tape, I'm just gonna wrap it around. Make sure all of the metal is covered because that is technically acting as a ground.
there you go there's your gps wire i know it looks weird but trust me this is going to help you expose the wire on these so like I said, we're gonna be working with these six pads right here. You've got a ground, five volt, TX6, RX6, SDA, and SCL. That's all we're gonna need for this plug. I already put some flux on there, but we'll do it again just to be safe. Tin these pads, we've got SCL, SDA, RX6, TX6, 5 volts, and ground. Just to get it out of the way, I'm going to do ground first. So with that coiled up, let's pre-tin all of these wires. We got ground right here. That's good. All right, there's the ground. Now with that holding it in place, we can get five volts hooked up right next to that. That's five volts. The white is hooking up next to the TX6 pad. And then we have yellow, and that's hooking up to RX6. So blue is going to SDA. And then green is going to SCL. Perfect. Cool, now we've got our GPS hooked up. So this I'm going to feed through the TPU mount, and then we should be able to get it hooked up to our GPS. So this is all kind of a little tight back here, but there's a cutout on the TPU piece for the wire. So I'm just gonna feed this right through here, and eventually it'll pop out. You don't have a lot of slack to work with, you get a little bit, but when you plug in the GPS in, you're gonna want this side up. So plug it in right like that. Do some tweezers to hold it in place if you got to. I felt it click in. Now the GPS is just going to click right into place right like that. This heat shrink around this, you don't have to take the heat shrink off. In fact, I'd probably just keep the heat shrink on there. There we go, there's our GPS. So now we can secure this down again. You gonna take the screwdriver. We'll get the rear standoffs kind of lined up with those screws. Next up, let's get our receiver on here. I'm gonna get the antennas mounted first and then we'll move on to the receiver. So this one I'm not gonna install yet. This one, we're gonna run the cable. There's a little bit of space kind of in the rear right here. So I'm gonna run the cable up through that, through the top, and the antenna is gonna sit right in here. This one is also meant for an Immortal T style antenna. The way that this one's gonna mount, you have this little TPU piece, and it took me a little while to figure out what the hell this was and how it worked, but it's pretty cool. You slide the UFL connector through here, like that, and then this antenna is gonna sit right like this. So you fold it like that, and now this is gonna sit on the beeper, and the beeper actually has its own little hole and they include a screw that goes through and attaches to that. So let's get that secured down. <clears throat> I 
There you go. So you got one immortal T antenna back here, and then you got the other one right up here. So let's hook up the receiver. Now the receiver that I'm using is the TBS Crossfire Nano Diversity. So what we're gonna be doing is we've got tons of pads on this thing, but we're really only gonna be using four. We've got ground, and I'll try and point these out to you so you can see what they are. Ground, five volt, channel one, which is gonna be TX, and then channel two is gonna be RX. The rest of these pins, you don't have to worry about. Flux it. Now I'll put some solder on those pads just to tin them and get them ready. Five volts, channel one or TX, and channel two or RX. Perfect. They include a little bag of wires with the receiver. So you got tons of wires, so I'm gonna pick out a red one. Use that. Ground, and then we need TX and RX. Let's save the rest of these wires for a rainy day. Ground, five volt next. We'll have green BTX. And then we'll have yellow BRX. Cool. Let's get it soldered up to the flight controller. So with these wires on the receiver, we're gonna hook this up to UART1. So RX1 and TX1 are right here. We've got a five volt right next to it. This is right next to the pads that we're using for the buzzer. So we've got five volt RX1, TX1, and then right in the middle right here, we've got a ground. So I'm gonna use those four pads for our receiver. Gonna put a little bit more flux on those pads since it's kind of dried up at this point. Tin those four pads that we're gonna be using. We've got ground right, or five volts right here, RX, TX, ground. We'll start with five volts, get that soldered on there. That looks good. Next we'll do ground because we're gonna have the uh, green TX wire going above that. So just to keep it nice and tidy. ground and then green is going to TX on here so we're going to want to connect that to RX on our flight controller so this is going to be hooked up to RX1 and then yellow will get hooked up to TX1 there we go I think that that is all the soldering we're going to have to do so I'm going to turn that off there's our receiver all right, so before we go much further, why don't we secure the camera down to the frame since we're pretty much done with everything up here. This part goes right underneath, screws into those standoffs. Make sure that these little carbon fiber pieces fix down into the bottom of the plate. Looks good. Got the XT60 up here. Let's take the four nuts that were included and we'll secure down the flight controller to the drone. All right, so we're just about ready to put the top cover on this thing and hop over to the computer and give it a quick tune. The last thing we gotta do is secure our receiver. Now, since I'm using a receiver like the TBS Crossfire Diversity, this is a bigger receiver. If you're using something like an ELRS, a smaller ELRS receiver, or maybe even a Crossfire Nano RX, you'd probably be able to get away with putting the receiver up front here, like maybe next to the camera or maybe above the buzzer or something. But since I'm working with limited space on this drone, we don't really have any more space inside the frame. So where I'm actually gonna put the receiver is underneath the drone in between these carbon fiber plates. So all I'm gonna do now is put some heat shrink around this. We'll get these antennas hooked up and I'll show you guys where exactly I'm gonna put it underneath here. There's one. So 
So I'm going to take the receiver, put it underneath the GPS cable. That's going to kind of keep the antennas in line where they need to be. We can zip tie that after the fact. And now we have the GPS or the, uh, this isn't the GPS, the receiver. I'm going to go underneath these motor wires. It's going to be able to keep everything kind of in this area. And now the receiver is just right on the side there and I can tuck it right underneath the frame and we'll add a couple zip ties to just keep that nice and secure in one spot. All right, so I'm happy with how these antennas are all kind of ran. I have this front Immortal T antenna just kind of running along the top of the stack. Same with this one. This one's going right over to the O3 air unit. This is the one in the rear. And all I'm gonna do now is just kind of put some zip ties down. I do want to put some zip ties on the arms. I want to put a zip tie on these wires. Basically just use zip ties to just kind of secure everything down and make sure that it stays nice and tidy. Now before we put our top plate on, we gotta put some straps on and the frame came with two straps. One of them I'm going to just put right in the back. You have this little lip right here. I'm gonna slide it right underneath this and you'll see why I do this in a minute. Just kinda keep it right like that. And then this other strap is gonna go right through here like that and then up through the other side. So then you can have the strap right like this so that's that's how you want the strap to look now we're not going to do the same on the rear because we don't have enough room with the o3 air unit in there plus these uh, wires so what i'm going to do is we get this back here that's going to be the rear strap and then this is the front strap xt60 goes through this hole right there line up the camera mounts in the top make sure all your cables are looking good and in a good spot we get the O3 lined up, that just clicks into place. And the rest of these things should fall into place too. Make sure your antenna isn't pinched under there. Cool. It's a little tight, you do have to kind of push it down a little bit. You don't have a lot of room to work with in this frame. So now take the screws that were included with the frame and just kind of screw the top plate down. And this strap just goes right like that. Dude, look at this thing. This thing is clean, brother. All right, last thing to test is power. Now you can test this throughout the build to make sure that you're not bridging stuff as you go. When you do test it, I would highly recommend using something like a smoke stopper. So when I plug this in here, we want the green LED to stay on and we'll probably hear everything start up. If this LED turns off, that's telling me that I have a short somewhere and we're gonna have to take this apart and take a look at what's causing that. looks good everything sounds good I saw a little LED on the beeper I can see LEDs on the flight controller and I got a red LED on the O3 air unit so everything looks good that's what you want this is pretty much oh I didn't even think of that the beeper that we have in here actually has its own built-in battery so when you unplug the battery from the drone this will probably just keep beeping since it has its own battery source so to turn it off you're gonna need something thin I'm gonna be using these scissors if I was on the go I'd probably just be using the tweezers I have in my bag um, but you can kind of see the switch here I can see it click it and hold it for a minute you'll hear those beeps and you're good so now it should stop beeping Nice. Let's take this over to the computer and tune it. All right, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna launch beta flight. Make sure your drone is plugged in. We're not gonna need a battery plugged in for this part right here. Make sure it pops up here and make sure you're running 10.9. If you're not running 10.9, make sure you update to it. We're gonna go update firmware. If you're not running 4.4, I am already running 4.4, but if you're not, you can auto detect. This should pop up 4.4.1 full chip arrays, load firmware, flash firmware, and then you're good. I already have that, so I'm just gonna hit connect, and you'll have these things pop up right here. We don't have a motor output protocol, and the accelerometer is enabled, but not calibrated. So let's do those things first. Let's calibrate the accelerometer. If you're tilting the drone forward and back, and it's not reflecting correctly on the screen, you'll have to adjust that. I'll show you how to do that later. Um, but right now, since mine's fine, I'm gonna hit calibrate accelerometer. 
And then let's hop down to the motors tab and we'll change this. This is what was giving us that error in the beginning. We'll change this to D shot 600. And while we're at it, we'll turn on bi-directional D shot. And then save reboot. And we shouldn't have any pop-ups initially right here. Perfect. So let's disconnect from this and we're actually gonna hop over to BL Heli 32. And when we're doing this, we're gonna have to plug a battery into the drone. So do that now. All right, so since we have a motor output protocol selected now, now it'll connect to this. If you don't have that motor output protocol, it's not gonna be able to recognize it in BL Heli Suite. So we'll hit connect. It's gonna read the ESC and then read setup. You should see the ESCs all pop up right here. Make sure they're all running the same firmware. They should be, I'd be surprised if they weren't. And the main thing that we're gonna do here, we're actually not gonna change any of these settings. All you wanna do is just double check and make sure that you're running 96 kilohertz PWM frequency. We're running 96 on frequency high and frequency low, so that's perfect. So let's disconnect from this, we're all set. So we'll just... So we'll disconnect from BL Heli. We can close that and we'll open beta flight back up. Connect to the drone. Now let's hop over to the ports tab. So I put the receiver on UART1. So we're gonna turn serial RX on for UART1. We're gonna go down to UART3. That's where we have the O3 air unit plugged in. And we're actually gonna use a preset for this. So you don't technically have to turn this on right now and you don't have to select um, this VTX MSP display port because we're gonna use a preset. So I'm actually gonna keep those off. Let's go to UART6, which is where our GPS is. We can select GPS, keep that on auto, and we can hit save reboot. Now let's hop down to, let's do presets. We'll key in O3, we'll set up the O3 air unit for the OSD elements. Map to display port, set HD OSD, perfect. And like I said, we used UART3, so we're gonna select this one. Pick, and now that one's selected, and now we can select another preset, which is our long range preset, and this is kind of the tune for the drone. And I have noticed that these UAV tech presets work awesome. Big props to UAV tech for these. I use this on my Cinewhip, my long range drones. I've tested it on, a, on freestyle drones and they all fly awesome. So we're gonna go with this one. Makes setup very easy. We'll click this little drop down menu, medium build quality, that's good. RPM filter. I like to use RPM filtering when it's available, so we'll select that. And then we're running 96 kilohertz PWM, so we're gonna select this and deselect that one. I don't use dynamic idle since it's more so for prop wash, and I don't really notice a lot of prop wash, if any, with long range drones since it's not really freestyling around. So select these three and you should be good. I'll hit pick, agree, and then let's save reboot. Awesome. Let's hop over to the receiver tab. Now I have my receiver, I already bound it. And as you can see, it thinks the throttle is roll and it thinks the pitch is throttle and it's all messed up. So very easy to change this. Go to channel map and change it from uh, the default to spectrum, which is T-A-E-R as opposed to A-E-R-T, I think. Hit save and you should see these values change. So now it knows that throttle is this one, throttles, throttle, rolls, roll, yaws, yaw, and that's perfect. We don't have to do anything else in this. Hit save. Now we'll hop down to modes, uncheck that. We'll add an arm switch, flick the switch that you wanna use for arm and adjust these brackets to wherever the little yellow kind of dot is. We'll go down. I always add horizon to long range drones just because it's kind of an added peace of mind and makes long range flying a little easier. We'll do GPS rescue. So this is our GPS rescue switch right here. And since I'm using a three-way switch, that's gonna be GPS enabled, that's gonna be GPS enabled, and then that's GPS off. So we have a big range here for GPS. I have that AUX6 dedicated purely for uh, GPS rescue. We'll go down, we'll turn on our beeper. Flip over after crash, always.
And I think that's pretty good. I don't think we really need anything else on. I'm happy with that. Hit save. Hide unused modes. Now just kind of move all the switches around and make sure that the correct thing is lighting up when you move it. Looks good. Hop back up to the top and let's just make sure that all of this is all set. So since we applied that preset, you can see that it's enabled. Configuration MSP is enabled for UART3, so this is the O3R unit. And then you also have VTX MSP plus display port. Perfect. Go down to configuration. We've got eight kilohertz gyro update frequency and PID loop. Perfect. You can name your drone. I usually change the arming degrees to 180. Make sure air mode's on, OSD is on, and if you used any LED strips, you can turn it on here. The rest of those will keep off. GPS, you're gonna have a box down here since we have our GPS UART selected, and I usually select Auto Baud and use Galileo. This looks good, we'll turn it on here. And if you had any issues with your drone rotating in a weird direction, so if you put the flight controller on like backwards or something, you would have to change the sensor alignment right here. Since mine's on the right way, uh, we don't have to adjust any of that, so we'll just hit save reboot. All right, so now it's time to set up our GPS rescue settings. Since we have it all set up in our modes tab, we have the GPS rescue switch, and we've gone into configuration and made sure that we have GPS on, we have it set up through the port and everything. Now it's time to go into the fail safe tab. Now, if you don't have a fail safe tab, you're gonna have to turn on enable expert mode, and that's just this little switch right here. When you turn it on, you'll see fail safe, you get GPS, there's a couple other ones that pop up, uh, but we're gonna be doing everything in fail safe. So we're not gonna be changing anything in valid pulse range settings. We're gonna mainly just be looking at channel fallback. I like to set throttle to hold instead of auto. This is basically just gonna tell it to hold the last throttle position that it received from my controller. And then we're gonna set the switch that we made GPS rescue, which is aux six. We're gonna change that to set. Now, if you remember the range that we had on our modes for GPS rescue, we had the minimum set to 1300 and the maximum set to 2100, I think. So we're gonna have to choose a number in between that to set the value to so that it triggers GPS rescue. So I'm gonna set this 1500 would work. I'm gonna change it to 1700 because that's perfectly in the middle um, of the bracket. So now we're all set over on this side. Failsafe switch, we don't have to worry about. Stage two, so this is when an actual failsafe happens. You have guard time right here, so this is after the radio disconnects from the drone, how long it takes for stage two failsafe to kick in. It's set to 1.5, um, so once one and a half seconds, I wouldn't adjust that. I think that's pretty good. You're definitely gonna have to change this from drop uh, to GPS rescue because obviously we don't want a stage two fail safe to just have the drone drop and we don't want it to just land wherever it is. We want it to try and come back home. So that is GPS rescue. So let's turn this on. And now you can adjust some of these settings. You have the angle of the drone, the initial altitude. All of these settings are pretty good. I honestly keep these the same. The only one that I typically change is minimum satellites, and I usually put six because six is typically good enough to get a good lock on where the home position is. And once you start flying, you're gonna acquire more satellites. So that's pretty good. Keep um, allow arming without fix. This is basically like if you had this on and you didn't have six satellites, you could still arm the drone, but then you're not gonna get a valid home point. So you could have zero satellites and still fly away and you actually won't have GPS rescue because you have this switch on. So make sure that you keep this off. Um, altitude mode, maximum altitude, that's basically just the height that the drone will fly to before it flies back home. So I keep this at maximum altitude and then sanity checks fail safe only. Once you have all that all set, now we can hit save reboot. Now the last thing we gotta do is set up our motors and make sure those are ready to go. So when you're doing this, make sure you don't have props on. You're gonna have to lightly touch the motors so you can't have props on when you do this, just don't do it. So you're gonna need a, a battery plugged in to do this. And the first thing we're gonna have to do is if you remember when we installed the ESC, we actually installed it. We actually installed, is that the GPS? Do we have GPS already? <laughs> Dude, that's sick. That's how fast you get 
GPS satellites when you wrap that little wire. So let's go back to the motors tab. Um, we've got, let's see, uh, reorder motors. So what you can do is you can understand the risks and you can just spin up motor one and see which one is spinning. And I can see that motor four is spinning right now. When I do two, motor three, and then when I do motor three, motor two is spinning and motor four is gonna be motor one. So we have to remap this. And the easiest way to do this is reorder motors, understand the risks, again, remove your propellers and we'll hit start and now click on the spinning motor. So I can see that motor four is spinning right now. So it's basically looking for motor one. So we're gonna click this since this is the one that's actually spinning. Motor three is spinning now. So we're telling beta flight that this is motor three. This one's spinning now, so this is motor two. And then this is motor one. And you hit save. Perfect. Now we'll go back to the motors tab and recheck this, spin them one at a time, and make sure that motor one is spinning. So now motor one is spinning. Motor two, motor two is good. Motor three, and motor four. Perfect. So now we just have to change the motor direction. So we're gonna check this. We're gonna spin these. We can spin them all at once if you wanted to, just lightly. And just lightly touch the motors and see which direction they're spinning. So I can tell right now that motor one is spinning clockwise, which is what we want. Motor two is spinning counterclockwise, which is perfect. Motor three is spinning counterclockwise, and motor four is spinning clockwise. So we actually don't have to change any motor direction at all. If you did have to change the motor direction, what you would do is select motor direction and this wizard makes it just as easy as reordering the motors. Understand the risks, go to the wizard and you can start spin the motors and feel the motors like you just did in that other mode. Um, and then if one is spinning the wrong way, all you do is select it and it's gonna change the direction. And then when you're done, you just hit stop motors and close and you should be all set. So now the last thing you got to do is just set up your OSD. This isn't something I'm going to show you how to do. You should have HD selected here. Just kind of select the values that you want to see on the screen and rearrange them accordingly. And you'll have your OSD elements in your goggles. Right like that. That's how I like to have my OSD set up. You get the altitude, uh, longitude, latitude, how many satellites you get, the direction home, your alerts the amount of time that you've been flying, battery voltage, and your receiver link quality. Hit save, and we're all set. All right, so now that we got this thing all set up in beta flight, this is ready to fly. All we gotta do is put some props on, and if you remember the prop direction, we've got this motor and this motor spinning counterclockwise, and then this motor and this motor spinning clockwise. So take the appropriate props, and then take the included prop nuts and secure those down. All right, guys, look at this. This thing looks so friggin' cool. Let's go fly in the mountains and get some nice cinematic footage with the O3 air unit.
this thing is sick. I absolutely love how this flies and how the footage looks out of the O3 Air unit. The footage that you just saw was filmed in 2.7K on the O3 Air unit with an ND32. The ND filters that I'm using on this drone are the Flywoo ND filters, the wider ND filters, like the, uh, I think there's Freewell and there's a couple other ones that are more so meant for the Avada. I don't think that that will fit on this frame. So I would go with the Flywoo ND filters like this. One thing that I want to make sure that I mention is that I did test out some bi-blade props. So I picked these up from Race Day Quads and these are HQ Prop 7x4.5 props. And I do notice slightly better flight time over the tri-blades that are on here now. So I will be using these going forward on this drone. If you have any suggestions on bi-blades or tri-blade props that you think I could get better flight time with, leave those in the comment section down below. So when I filmed that flight footage, I had these tri-blade props on here and I didn't really know what kind of flight time I'd be getting out of my two lithium ion packs. So I didn't push it too crazy, but after some testing, I'm seeing almost 25 minute long flights with this 5200 6S lithium ion battery and those HQ bi-blade props. I also tested out this 3000 milliamp 6S lithium ion pack. And I was seeing about 15 minute flights with this one. Since I didn't really know what kind of flight time I'd be getting when filming that footage, I only flew about three kilometers away from myself, knowing now that I can easily get 20 minutes minimum out of this setup with the bi-blade props I feel like we could potentially max out the range on the O3 air unit and as far as the crossfire diversity receiver goes I'm not even worried about the range with that uh, that thing's gonna be just fine so with this new testing under my belt, I already have plans to take this thing up to the White Mountains. I wanna try and fly to an island off the shore of Beverly, Massachusetts. If you're familiar with the area, I pretty much wanna fly from Beverly out to Baker's Island, which is pretty much like four and a half miles. Um, I've never flown that but I feel like with 25 minute long flights, I should be able to do that pretty easily with this. So definitely keep an eye out for a lot more footage coming from this drone. So overall, I love this build, very happy with this frame. I love that it comes with the diversity antenna mounts out of the box. The entire build is a little on the expensive side, but since you have the O3 air unit in there, you can get some very nice footage out of it and you don't have to worry about the added weight of a GoPro. Let's see what this weighs. So dry weight, Without a battery, we're looking at about 633 grams. When you add a 3000 milliamp 6S lithium ion pack like this, you're looking at 932 grams. And then when you add something like this 5200 6S lithium ion pack, you're looking at 1.23 kilograms. So definitely up there with weight, but since you don't have the GoPro, you don't really have to worry about it. The thing honestly flies awesome with that 5200. The last thing I have to cover, I know people will be asking me to build this drone for them, and this isn't something that I offer. I just straight up don't have the time to do that. When it comes to FPV drones, I feel like if you really want to get into FPV, you should know how to build or work on your drones. And that's the whole reason that I make videos like this, to show you how easy it is to actually do. Plus, you can just follow this video, do it yourself, save a bunch of money. Plus, you'll be a lot more confident in fixing your drone when you crash. So links to everything that I use in this video will be down in the description. If you notice that some of the parts are sold out, usually parts do sell out when I make a build video like this, but I will try and post as many alternative links as I can. If you want to know the parts that I use in build videos like this before the video comes out, be sure to check out my Patreon because my patrons have had access to this list of parts for about a week or so, so they have had a head start on everyone that's watching this build video today. So if parts are sold out, it's probably because a handful of my Patreons pick them up. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, leave the video a like, and if you have any questions or comments or any suggestions of other things that I could add to this drone to potentially get longer flight time, leave a comment down below.